Let's make the best rum cocktails that are not daiquiri, mojito, piña colada, mai tai or cuba libre. Right now on Dr. Cork. I decided to make some interesting and very different cocktails with rum, El Presidente, Haitian Divorce, Blood Orange and Stout Espresso Martini, Añejo Highball and Rum Punch. Because rum is versatile in mixing and especially complements fruit juices. Made from sugarcane, it's a staple in tropical regions, pairing effortlessly with fruits like oranges, mangoes, pineapples, as well as spices such as cloves, allspice, cinnamon and nutmeg. Unlike other spirits, which are often uh, tied to a specific place of production and have to fulfill certain requirements, this is not the case with rum. Basically, if you make a distillate from sugarcane molasses or sugarcane juice, it can be called rum. Usually it is then aged in oak casks, but even that is not a requirement. While scotch is produced only in Scotland, tequila in tequila region of Mexico and cognac in the cognac region of France, rum is produced in more than 80 countries, using many divergent methods with copious variations of fermentation, different types of distillation, myriad blending styles and a plethora of aging techniques. So choose according to your taste. And don't listen to anybody who says that true rum can be such and such, it's just not the case. Let's start with a classic rum punch. Punches date back to at least the 17th century, before the advent of many modern bartending tools, ingredients or even easily accessible ice. They traditionally feature a spirit, citrus, spice, sugar and water. But if you need something simpler, you can't go wrong with rum and fruit juice, which are a perfect pairing. Rum punch is usually shaken. And to the shaker we're gonna add white rum, in my case this is Cuban rum, 1 ounce, 30 milliliters. Dark or aged rum. In my case, this is from Nicaragua. Also one ounce, 30 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lime juice, three quarters of an ounce, 22 milliliters. Grenadine syrup, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. And pineapple juice, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. You can also add orange juice and uh, more rum, but it's not necessary. Fill the shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. Fine strain the cocktail and garnish with a mint sprig and a couple of cocktail cherries, which I made already on this channel. A perfect, well-balanced, sweet, a little bit sour and pretty intensively rum cocktail. You can interchange most of the ingredients, you can add different rums, you can add different juices, maybe just a simple syrup instead of grenadine. You can do whatever you want with it. It'd still be good. Before we continue, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel, join YouTube membership or become a patron using the links below. Oh, and hit that like button. Thanks a lot. The El Presidente cocktail was created in the early 1900s in Cuba and was likely named for President Mario Garcia Menocal, who ran the country from 1913 to 1921. This recipe comes from acclaimed bartender Simon Ford. It yields a tasty, well-balanced cocktail, but the El Presidente has changed through the years with many bartenders tweaking the recipe. The cocktail is shaken. And to the shaker we're gonna add white rum. This time it's not Cuban. One and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. Dry vermouth, three quarter ounce, 22 milliliters. Some recipe call for sweet vermouth and different proportions. I prefer this one. Orange curacao liqueur. You can use any liqueur with orange taste, like triple sec or dry curacao or something like that. But not blue curacao, because it tastes not like orange, but like sugar. A quarter ounce, about seven milliliters. Grenadine syrup, about this much, like five milliliters. And optional, but recommended saline solution. 20 grams of salt to 80 grams of water. About two drops. Fill the shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. Fine strain to the cocktail glass and garnish with an orange peel. Mm, it's a pretty strong cocktail. Uh, it's sweet, uh, it's not too strong. It's like, uh, it has alcohol in it, but uh, it's pretty easy to drink. I'd say this is dangerous. All the tastes are there. If you use quality ingredients, uh, mainly rum, because it's uh, most of the cocktail is rum, you'll get a, a nice cocktail. I'd give it uh, four out of six. 
The next one is Blood Orange and Stout Espresso Martini. A very quirky riff on the classic espresso martini created by my YouTube colleague Steve the Barman. Don't not to be confused with Steve the Butter and too many Steves these days. I found the combination of rum, stout, espresso and citrus curious, so I decided to replicate the recipe. I haven't tried it myself yet. This cocktail is shaken. And to the shaker we're gonna add rum, it should be dark rum, whichever you prefer. One and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. White creme de cacao liqueur, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Actually, you can use dark creme de cacao liqueur, no problem. A little bit of vanilla syrup, just a drop. Next thing you're gonna need is blood orange juice. I have Sicilian oranges. I don't know <laughs> why are they so small, more like limes. So about one ounce or 30 milliliters of blood orange juice. Then we're gonna need stout. You can use Guinness or something you prefer, Murphy's. I prefer oyster stout. One and a half ounce, 45 milliliters. And espresso, 30 milliliters, one ounce. Fill the shaker with ice. And shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to you and to this comment. Fine strain to the cocktail glass. And garnish with three coffee beans. I'd say this is a balanced cocktail. Guinness or stout and espresso go together great. Cacao liqueur, I don't know if that's needed, but this combination of citrus, coffee and stout is pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, I don't know about rum. It sounds like it should be good there, but uh, I think if, if we added vodka, it wouldn't be too bad. All in all, it's a good one to try. I recommend it. Six out of nine coffee beans. <laughs> Bartender Tom Richter created the Haitian divorce in 2012 while he was the head bartender at the now shattered cherry bar The Beagle in New York City. By the way, it's sad that many of the places I talk about in my videos do not longer exist, so let's honor their memory. It's essentially an old fashioned, a riff on the old fashioned. I have made an entire video about different variations on the old fashioned, including the one with rum. Check it out. The Beagle co-owner Dan Greenbaum created a drink with a split base of bourbon and Calvados and employed Pedro Jimenez's sherry as a sweetener. And Tom Richter took Greenbaum's drink and tweaked it, experimenting with different bases until he came up with a combination of rum and mezcal, which together evoke the flavor of scotch whiskey. If people don't know what's in it, they think it's a smoky whiskey, but it's a little bit more complex than that, he says. By the way, there's a product called Rum Scal, which is exactly that, rum mixed with mezcal. I guess you can use it instead of mixing the two spirits, but I don't have it, and also I don't like to be not in control. <laughs> For this cocktail, we're gonna need a mixing glass, to which we're gonna add rum, it's a dark rum, one and a half ounce, 45 milliliters, mezcal, joven or white, Three quarter ounce, 22 milliliters. Sweet Pedro Jimenez sherry, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Angostura bitters, two dashes. Stir a little and check for balance. Balance detected. Fill the stirring glass with ice and stir thoroughly to chill and dilute. To the old fashioned glass, put a big ice ball and strain the cocktail. Sprinkle essential oils from the orange peel and garnish with it. If you want to know how to make this, it's pretty easy. Just use a knife and your hands. Very deep. It's deep, man. <laughs> uh, the taste is complex. If you don't like mezcal, maybe this one is for you because uh, the taste of mezcal blends with uh, rum. And I can't say that I would think that it's scotch in, in there, but uh, I definitely wouldn't notice that uh, there's rum. All in all, it's a nice strong drink, stronger than any other from today's video. And if you like strong drinks with uh, a little bit of uh, smoky, uh, and agave taste, this one is for you. And one more cocktail with rum, Añejo Highball, created by Dale de Graff, also known as the King of Cocktails in 1990s in the Rainbow Room, New York City. I'm gonna build this cocktail directly in the highball glass because I'm too tired of uh, dedicating shakes. 
Fill the highball glass with ice, then add Caribbean rum. Mine is overproof, it's 57% alcohol. So I'm gonna add one ounce, 30 milliliters of this rum and not 45. And a little bit of Barbados Jamaica. About 20 milliliters, two thirds of an ounce. Orange curacao liqueur, half an ounce, 15 milliliters. Freshly squeezed lime juice, seven milliliters, a quarter ounce. I'm using a fine strainer so that only juice comes through. A dash of Angostura bitters, stir a little and top up with ginger beer, not ginger ale. Stir a little more and garnish with the smallest orange wedge you have ever seen and the lime wedge. Pretty shocking. It's uh, very gingery, thanks to ginger beer. Uh, rum is also present there. Seems like a very strong cocktail, but because of uh, ginger. In its heart, it's still a highball. Maybe a little bit uh, sweetness wouldn't hurt, but that depends on your taste. Also, it depends on the sweetness of your ginger beer. For example, Bundaberg is pretty sweet ginger beer. So if I added that, it would be sweeter. Thanks for watching. Write down in the comments which great rum cocktails I've forgotten. Check out other videos, subscribe to Patreon, join the YouTube membership. The recipes in text form are on my website, dr-kord.com. The link is down below. Drink responsibly and as always, the Svidos.